agile, fearsome combat helicopters were one of the symbols of the Vietnam War. American Cobras and Hueys left such an imprint on the world that the USSR kick-started the development of their legendary flying tank, the Mi-24. The US themselves were quick to build on the experience gained in Vietnam by developing a new attack helicopter. The new aircraft had to be superior to the Cobra in every possible way and fit to carry out the most complex of missions. It had to be able to operate during adverse weather conditions, but night or day, be fitted with two engines for better survivability, and have a max speed of around 270 kph. It would also have the maneuverability for terrain following NOE or Nap of the Earth flying. The program that aimed to develop this aircraft was called the Advanced Attack Helicopter. After the US Army issued a request for proposals in 1972, all major players came up with corresponding designs. But the only companies that made it to the final round were Hughes Aircraft and Bell, with both their prototypes taking to the air in 1975. Before the choice was made, though, the military also decided that the new helicopter should use the General Electric T-700 engines that they planned to install on several new helicopters. In the end, after thorough testing, the Army selected Hughes prototype over the Bells due to the fact that it had a more damage-tolerant four-blade main rotor. At some point, the team behind the project made a decision to drop the time-tested tow missiles in favor of the cutting-edge laser-guided Hellfire missile. Furthermore, as a result of fierce competition between Martin Marietta and Northrop, the impeccably armed helicopter was also given top-notch avionics. In 1981, the aircraft was designated AH-64 and received the name Apache. And as early as 1984, the first Apaches were finally shipped to the Army. The helicopter was meant to be used in high-threat environments, even behind enemy lines. Naturally, to operate such a vehicle, you needed very capable pilots with excellent reaction speeds, a knack for independent action, and good improvisation skills. The military had to pick the best of the best and then put them through rigorous training. To make it somewhat easier for the pilots, the helicopter was also fitted with the target acquisition and designation sites and a pilot night vision system, a combined sensor and targeting unit providing the pilot with lots of info on the current combat situation and the status of its internal systems. The Apache was first used in combat in Panama, but revealed its true power during Operation Desert Storm. Despite the fact that the helicopter wasn't really made with desert warfare in mind, it was still very effective thanks to the employment of superior tactics. During 1995, the US introduced a new variation of the Apache, the AH-64D Longbow. It's very easy to tell it apart from the original model because it has a distinct dome with a radar located above the main rotor. One of the biggest advantages of the Longbow is that it can use the new, more advanced Hellfire 2 missile. Furthermore, the helicopter is fitted with advanced sensors that allow it to fight AA missile systems at extreme range. Not surprisingly, the Apache is also a very popular export vehicle. The Israeli Air Force was the first to receive AH-64As. The local variation of this helicopter is called the Peten, meaning Cobra in Hebrew, and is available in War Thunder as a premium vehicle. You can also research and unlock a Japanese AH-64DJP and a British attack helicopter Mark I. The Japanese Apache is basically just a regular longbow equipped with an upgraded targeting system, while the British variation is vastly different from its American brethren. 
It's made by Augusta Westland, an Anglo-Italian multinational company. The one major difference is the use of a pair of Rolls-Royce engines, outputting more than 2,000 horsepower each. But there were lots of other improvements to make the helicopter more effective in modern combat scenarios. For example, it can use the British Star Streak missile. The Apache has seen a lot of action in Iraq, Afghanistan, Lebanon, and other countries. But it's not going anywhere anytime soon. This is still one of the most dangerous and effective attack helicopters in the world. And the US are planning to give it a long list of upgrades. All in all, it's only reasonable to expect the Apache to dominate the skies for at least a couple of dozen more years yet. Is there an Apache model that you particularly like? Tell us, please, in the comments below.